The Klamath River, a lifeline for ecosystems, communities, and cultures, has embarked on a monumental journey. With the largest dam removal project in U.S. history now completed, the river is poised for renewal. It has been moving to see those dams come down, scoop by scoop, rock by rock. There are no words to describe how powerful that is, to just see how the river remembers, as my colleague Amy likes to say. The river remembers and it is coming back to life. I've been involved in this for more than 20 years, and to actually see it happening, it's kind of like a weight just coming off my shoulder. What an exciting moment for California's fishes. Here we have the last pieces of Iron Gate Dam being pulled out of the channel, the river coming back into its own and opening a migratory pathway. Perhaps the most exciting thing for myself personally and for the tribe, you know, as well, like that's building a sustainable future uh, for our children. But as the barriers come down, a vital question emerges. What's next after dam removal? The answer lies in comprehensive monitoring. Understanding how the river heals is crucial for revitalizing fisheries, restoring habitats, and supporting the communities that rely on them. Cal Trout has been a part of this project since the beginning. Now at the removal of the Klamath Dams, which is a huge milestone in this restoration project, but actually just the beginning of recovery for the fishes of the Klamath River. California Trout is at the forefront leading a coalition of tribal nations, conservation groups, and agencies dedicated to tracking the river's transformation. All right, so we are here at Res Ranch, uh, right on the Klamath River, and um, we are getting ready to put together the sonar unit that the Department of Fish and Wildlife has uh, donated to this project so that we're ready for when the fish get here and we can, can detect adult salmonids moving through the river. Sediment released after Iron Gate Dam's removal has made the water turbid. Since this cloudiness will last into the fall salmon run, scientists can use sonar, which operates effectively despite suspended sediment. Think of our sonar unit as an underwater flashlight, but instead of shining light, it emits sound waves. Placed just a foot below the river's surface, it sends out acoustic pulses that scan across the entire width of the river. When the sound waves hit something, like a fish, they bounce back into the unit. By capturing these echoes, we can create real-time images of the fish swimming by, giving us a clear picture of how the river is rebounding without the dams. But a big difference is on the Elwha, where the dam removal occurred and where their sonar stations are is really close to the ocean. So as opposed to the Klamath here, where again, they will have already traveled 200 miles instead of seven. Sonar is just one tool in our kit for tracking adult salmonids returning in the fall. California's Department of Fish and Wildlife uses video weirs and spawning ground surveys to monitor adult salmon moving from the main stem Klamath into tributaries before and after they spawn. Federal, state, and tribal partners conduct carcass surveys to assess spawning success and overall fish health. To study juveniles near the river's confluence, CDFW employs net traps, catching and releasing young fish quickly to minimize stress. We also utilize telemetry and pit tags, tiny, minimally invasive trackers that let us monitor fish movements over time with stationary antennas. Additionally, we collect environmental DNA, or eDNA, from water samples. This allows us to detect the presence of different species by analyzing genetic material they've left behind, all without any direct interaction. By combining these methods, we gather vital data on the river's recovery while respecting the fish's natural behaviors. Our goal is to support their journey, not hinder it. And so there are multiple reasons why we want to handle the fish less and try to reduce, you know, kind of getting in their way because it's, you know, at least a short-term delay in where they're trying to go. We're opening up cold, spring-fed habitats that are just going to be like fish nirvana for salmon, steelhead, lampreys, and other fishes of the Klamath to return home. It's over 400 miles of new habitat. It's been great to see everyone coming together to take a different part of this huge project. There's people that uh, have experienced this in the past, for example, on the Elwha, and there's so much that we can get out of that. And so just gathering these people here, the great minds in the room, room around here, it just has been, it's been really, really valuable for that. Our goal is to bring the salmon back for my Yurok and Kaduk colleagues so that their kids can practice their traditional fishing rights once again. And that's what's most important here is, is just understanding where these salmon are going, what different tributaries are they utilizing, is there more restoration work that needs to happen in order to help bring the salmon back home. 
In Oregon, you know, we have like hundreds of miles of available habitat. Habitat that's not accessible, it becomes difficult. If we can get our hands on fish in California and then track them as they move up the system into the new habitat, we'll be able to determine if repopulation is, ha is happening in Oregon. Um, so we were pretty, we we're really excited to be a partner on this project. And it's never easy, you know, to pull multiple agencies together, but we all have really good communication with each other. You know, we, we all respect each other as agencies. In all these projects, there's so much data, people are in information, people are coming out and it's complicated. And often when you sit on one side of the river, you see it differently than the person on the other side of the river. Cal Trout have people on the ground working with landowners, working with fishing communities, often communities that I don't work with directly as a scientist. Monitoring is more than just data collection. It's our compass for effective restoration. Yet it's often overlooked and underfunded. Funding for monitoring is very hard to come by and there's not a lot of opportunities. You oftentimes have to build it into an implementation restoration project and have monitoring kind of be an afterthought. We just weren't sure if the resources were going to be available to make this project happen and Caltrout was able to step in. I've been doing a lot of uh, hunting around for funding sources and oftentimes there's quick turnaround. Sometimes they're two days. They say, yeah, we're on it, we'll do it. Um, and I don't have any doubt in my mind that it's gonna get done even though it might be on a weekend and there's a two-day turnaround. They're just extremely reliable and extremely technically sophisticated, and they're just a pleasure to work with. Without data collection and long-term monitoring, we would not be able to make informed decisions about how to continue to move forward in recovery of these species. By investing in monitoring, we're not just observing change. We're ensuring a thriving future for the Klamath River and all who depend on it. Remarkably, while we're producing this video, our sonar detected the first fish swimming upstream, way sooner than expected. This swift return showcases the incredible resilience of these fish. Despite turbid waters and the long journey from the ocean, they're already reaching their ancestral spawning grounds. It proves that when we remove barriers and give nature a helping hand, life rebounds. This early arrival is a powerful sign of hope for the Klamath River's future.